could be me. Can yeah, you okay. hear now? Testing. <laughs> it could be on my end. Could be me. That's it. It's on. It's on now. Guess what? <laughs> it was on my end, y'all. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was me. That was me. Okay, now it's working. Now, let me put now it's working. See, Lord, you know I need a technical person that knows how to do this. So I don't have to do this. All right. Let's see, now it's working. Okay. Now you got Beverly up there and De Debbie yeah, up there, so uh -huh, people I can hear you now. Okay. All right. I apologize for that. That was my fault. It was something that I needed to hit on my end and just was not paying attention. Somebody said, now it's working. That was me. Good evening, Kingdom family. Hi, Beverly. Hi, um, Debbie. Hi, Eric. We're so glad. And for those that I cannot see your name, we're so glad to have you. And while I'm, I'm calling names, I might as well go ahead and call them the one's own um, conference call, right? Okay, hi mommy, hi Mama Lala, hi Cora, hi Pastor Matthews, and to everybody that's up here. Uh we thank God, we thank God, and we thank God. Amen. We are back, we're ready to rock and roll for those that are up here. And if you just came on a uh, conference call or whether on the, one of the Facebook platforms, we had a little technical difficulties on my end. But guess what? We are back and we're ready to rock and roll. All right, we are still in the series of applying the kingdom, chapter three, the exclusiveness of the divine priority. And I wanted to do a quick uh chapter three review of we have already covered um sections one principles one two three four and five and even print uh even section two we have already done that but i just want to do a quick review and then we're going to move forward with um concluding with um the remaining of this chapter on tonight so section one it begins and it it starts out by saying first seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you and the first principle that we went over is God is looking for kingdom possessed people. I encourage you that if you have not read chapter three, or whether you have a hard copy of the book or whether you have a uh, PDF copy of it, I, I commend that you read it and that it, um, it, it will come even more alive like never before. God is looking for kingdom possessed people people and we're not talking about being demonic that's not the way that we are talking about. that's not what we are talking about god wants his people so in tune so um into uh seeking his kingdom first that you you he's looking for kingdom possessed people people to the point because basically he's what he's saying here is that this is one of the simplest statements in the bible yet yet one of us one of the least obeyed you know, this is one of my favorite scriptures, but guess what? I'm really, really like since last year, I've been really, really finding out what this scripture is all about. And so I'm asking the Lord to help us not to be uh, possessed by our quest for things and for the good life, but because we are seeking to becoming kingdom possessed people if we are not there already. The scripture says to hunger and thirst after righteousness and we shall be filled. Also, principle two. For kingdom possessed people, all of life is about the kingdom of God. It's all about, all life is about the kingdom of God. And that's what we've been learning. And we want to keep on learning because guess what? This, 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 this understanding of the kingdom is ongoing. And I'm telling you, um, even studying uh, from the material from Dr. Miles Monroe, even he it took him like 30 years just to get to that point where he was amen and so guess what we are going to take it and we're going to go and, and 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 find out as much as possible of what god is saying and then we went over principle three the kingdom priority demands an exclusive claim on our lives it's a demand on our lives okay so also when we look at section two, which includes, um, I think it is section, um, it, it includes principle four. 
bear with me you guys because i am juggling watch i had done i cut that off i didn't mean to do that y'all bear with me so section two is talk about the parel so when you talk about parel you're talking about a threat or danger of divided loyalty and principle number four the kingdom priority is exclusive with regard to the cost it exacts from us and principle number five the kingdom of god is not a bless me club it is not a bless me club so let me kind of like briefly go over over number four let me do that okay so when we talk about um, principle number four the kingdom priority is exclusive with regard to the cost it exacts from us basically when you we're utilized we uh, talked about the scripture from Luke 9 uh, verses 57 and 58 a man he made a commitment but he was tested to see what the depth of his commitment was so Jesus was telling the man that he was homeless and if the man follows him the man would be homeless too so he was informing the man that he would no longer enjoy the creature of conference that he might have been used to he was asking the man if he was ready for that which led us to principle five talking about the kingdom of God is not a bless me club we do not follow God to get our bills paid and I want to say that again even though it was addressed on last week we do not follow God to get our bills paid we follow him because he is our king he is our heavenly father and this is about our relationship with him and having our priority right to know if we have our priorities right it is to know that he will take care of us and he will provide for all of our needs so that's why we don't focus on on our needs because he's going to make sure he he's going to take care of us uh been about a couple of years now i i, I, uh, uh, I did a sermon on god is not an unfit father and that's what we we got to have that mentality to know that he's going to take care of us. If we take care of his business, he's definitely going to take care of ours. So tonight we begin with principle six. The kingdom priority is exclusive with regard to our relationships, particularly with family. So this is the same section where we stopped from yes, um, um, last week on um, section two. And, and we want to talk about um, another. Uh, we want to talk about another person. Um, from Luke 9, 61 and 62 on tonight. Luke 9, for those that want to open up your Bibles on tonight, you are more than welcome to do so. Amen. So, we um, principle 6. Um, now, some of us might get offended because we got to really understand when God, he wants our all. He don't want us, he don't want a fraction, he don't want part. But God wants all. He wants all of us. And it can seem like God don't have no kind of um, remorse for his people. But you got to understand when God asks something of you, that part will be taken care of. And so we are particularly talking about with family, having relationships, particularly with family. So um, when we look at in Luke 9, verses 61 and 62, it, it talks about a second man and he wanted to follow Jesus. But later on his terms, after uh, taking leave of his family, Jesus's response revealed the divine nature of the man's heart. The man wanted to follow Jesus, but his whole heart was not in it. So he would follow, but he would he would keep looking back to what he left behind. And as believers of Jesus Christ, we cannot do that. Uh, what's the song say? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. When you follow in Jesus, it's going to be uncomfortable. Amen. Some, some places you're not going to be able to go. Not saying that it's wrong, but it may be wrong for you. And then at a, it, it'll be a season where you might not be able to connect with your family like you want to. So we have to be led by the Spirit of God on how we need to do things. What He tells us to do. And I'm telling you, it is very, very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. I would not tell you anything that I'm not aware of. But also when we go on, on to principle number seven, nothing is more important than the kingdom. Nothing is imp more important than the kingdom. We have to give the kingdom first priority. And, and just like, I'm, like I was mentioning about the man, you can't be half in and half out. You can't be 
um, saying I'm going to follow Jesus, then you're going to do your own thing. See, we have to honor God. And when we honor God, that means we obey him. So to postpone or turn aside from the direct call of God in favor of one's family uh, was to commit a greater sin. So God's promise to provide all these things when we seek first his kingdom includes caring for the family. We may have to leave behind in order to follow God's call. But this leads us to principle number eight. And it says, if we take care of the kingdom, the king, the king will take care of our family. Amen. Don't just do that because you know i'm ready to get away from my husband i'm getting ready to get away from my children no no i'm not saying like that if the spirit of the lord is leading you to do something amen you got to walk in the spirit of obedience amen and again principle eight is if we take care of the kingdom the king will take care of our family so from the story of last week the first man um the first man we understand that you know jesus was testing him okay if i don't have a home you're gonna be without a home so we understand when we go back looking at um what which principle was that one that was uh principle um principle number four so being tested guess what jesus was informing the man that he would no longer enjoy the, the conference that he might be used to and he was asking the man if he was ready to do that then the second man what he wanted to do he wanted to make sure that you know he 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 see about his family but we can't be half in or half out. We got to make sure that we all in for God, whatever he's telling us. Okay. So which leads us talking about another man on tonight. And it's going to lead us to going to um, section three, the test of kingdom priority. But I do want to add before we go to section three um, from the story last week about the first man and then tonight talking about. Um, this other this other man, both men from these verses who spoke to um to Jesus had the same problem. They had divided loyalty, and they both wanted to go with Jesus, and they wanted to stay home. Conflicting priorities pulled them into two directions. So their divided loyalty is revealed in how they responded to Jesus. So in both cases, they both call him Lord first, but. We cannot call Christ Lord and then say, but first let me do such and such. If he is Lord, there is no first. There is only a yes. Either, either when I say there, there's a no first, when I'm saying you can't go and do such and such, you can't go do what you want to do. It's about, you know, saying yes to God. Either, either he owns us or he doesn't. Either he is our master or he is not. So this encounter reveals that the, the kingdom priority takes precedence even over the demands and expectations of the family relationship. So now it leads us to section three, the test of kingdom priority, the test of kingdom priority, which leads us to Luke, the 18th chapter uh, verses 18 to um, 23. Let me make sure that I have uh, turned my um, slide for the people leading us to again they're going to scripture luke 18 verses 18 to through 23 so the introduction of this um section basically what is is telling us about a rich young ruler and we've heard that story um so many times and um he approached what what the rich young ruler did he approached jesus one day with a very important question he said good teacher what must i do to inherit life so you see Jesus noticed something that no one else did. He observed that the man was trying to serve two masters and those two masters was God and money. So this is why he told the man, you still lack one thing. Somebody ought to put that in the comment box on tonight. You still lack one thing. For those that are online, even on conference calls, somebody will pull, put that in their comment chat box on tonight. You still lack one thing. For those that are on Facebook and on YouTube on tonight, somebody need to put in the comment box, you still lack one thing. You still lack one thing. That's what Jesus told him. We, you know, we could do a, a, a thousand different things and still miss the, imp the most important thing. And success in the wrong assignment is failure. 
So this young ruler, by any worldly measure, this, this man was, he was successful, okay? But he was a failure in Jesus' eyes. Going back to that question, what he just said, you still lack one thing. So Jesus saw him as a failure in his eyes because he had neglected the most important thing and his heart was divided. He was not a kingdom possessed a man because his wealth stood in the way. How many today are allowing anything to stand in your way, whether it be your husband, your children, your money, your job, your business, uh, even yourself? How many are lacking one thing? Are you totally sold out? Now, I couldn't say this years ago, but now... I'm sold out. I'm sold out. And I'm every day I'm asking Lord to help me so that I can make sure that I am seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things will be added. And I'm seeing those things being added to my life. Amen. And it's going to get to the point. It's going to it's going to overtake me in a good way. So that's why I'm taking the time to teach this teach about the kingdom in this series called applying the kingdom. So going back to the story, Jesus told him, he said, sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. The kingdom priority claims our all and it demands that we will be completely stripped of everything before we start. So there is no room in the kingdom of God for a spirit of ownership. So this, this rich young ruler, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. You follow me in the story? Follow me in the story. That's one thing I've got to give you scripture reference to where I'm coming from. This, this rich young ruler was unwilling to surrender his earthly treasure for treasure in heaven. He, he was bound by a spirit of ownership and he failed the test of kingdom priority. You got to ask yourself, am I failing the test of kingdom priority? Am I putting the kingdom first? What am I putting first? You have to ask yourself these questions. Because he had created the wealth on his own. Basically, he might have said, well, I'm a self-made millionaire. See, he did this thing on his own. And he couldn't see himself letting go of his wealth. You hear what I say? It was his wealth. All right? So this allows us to bring... It's, it's what we're going to do now is to bring clarity to principle number nine. There is no room in the kingdom of God for a spirit of ownership. Okay. All right. Let me make sure I have changed my um, PowerPoint. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Come on. Act right thing. Hmm. All right, Lord. It don't want to act right. Oh, Lord, have mercy at Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, you just have to laugh sometimes, y'all. I tell you, you just have to laugh when things don't want to cooperate with you. You just have to laugh and keep it moving. Keep it moving. There is no room in the kingdom of God for a spirit of ownership. And as we continue to move forward, guess what we're going to do? We're going to learn even more about this spirit of ownership so that we can receive clarity on tonight. And we have two more um, principles to go over and then we're going to be done on tonight. Okay. So which leads us to section number three. Section number three, that's what it leads us on tonight. So it talks about the parel of a spirit of ownership. We're talking about when we say the word again, parel, we're talking about a threat or danger of a spirit of ownership. So we are talking about the rich young ruler that when he went away from Jesus, he was very sad because the price of entering the kingdom of God and gaining treasure of heaven was more than he was willing to pay. So Jesus was prompt to reiterate further to his followers, the parel, the danger of a spirit of ownership. And so that brings us to uh, Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 24 through 27. And it says, Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? And Jesus replied, what is impossible with men is possible with God. 
Okay. So I want to make sure that I, um, okay. I'm going to move this one here. I appreciate y'all patience and see, there go the scripture right there. I didn't change it in time, but the thing I like about what his listeners said, they said, well, who then can be saved? So now let's talk about the camel going through an eye of a needle. Let's talk about that on tonight, okay? Because I want to make sure that we have clarity and understanding because sometimes what we think something means something, it doesn't. Amen. So, first of all, I want to say wealth or more specifically the spirit of ownership is a, a hindrance to a person entering the kingdom of God. And so we need to understand what the word enter means as Jesus has used in this passage. And enter, it means to experience the true effect of again that word enter in this scripture what that means is experience the true effect of so in other words it is hard for a man to experience the true effect of what kingdom living is like because his wealth is his prison Okay, he is so trapped by the pursuit of things that he has no time to pursue the first thing. And he has become a prisoner of his own passions. So now let's talk about when Jesus spoke of the eye of a needle. And when we say the eye of a needle, it's not talking about a sewing needle. Okay, it's not talking about a sewing needle. So in that part of the world, both then and now, the eye of a needle refers also to two wooden posts are planted vert, vert, vertically in the ground close enough together so that a camel can squeeze between them only with difficulty because of the sand and the dryness of, of that desert environment camels can become very very dirty very quickly so the eye of a needle is is used used to help clean dirty camels so think about a car wash that you can relate you know you can relate to a a, a car wash and how it goes through um, those heavy brushes, but just tighter. We're talking about the, the, the post that, they, that the camels have to go through. They're just tighter and the camels don't want to go through them. Okay. But the camel driver leads the camel between the two posts until the animal's sides are stuck against them. OK, so the camel will remain still while it receives a bath. Then afterward, the driver draws the still wet camel the rest of the way through the eye of a needle. So that's what the eye of a needle means right there. So basically, when you look at all of this, it's easier when you do not have wealth first and then you learn um, about the kingdom of God and then you receive your wealth after is so much easier because you have your priorities straight. So just in, for giving an example, Abraham, Abraham, he was told to leave his country and out of his obedience as time went on, um, Abraham, he gained uh, wealth because of his obedience. Amen. He did what God told him to do. And we already know that Abraham did mess up down the road. But the thing is, he walked in the spirit of obedience. Amen. And that's how um, his wealth was accumulated because of his obedience. So when we talk about when the li listeners of Jesus wanted to know who then can be saved, if it is difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of God, then what hope is there for the rest of us? So Jesus assured them that that what was impossible in the eyes of men was possible with God. So the analogy that Jesus was saying that although it is difficult for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven, it is not impossible. A spirit of ownership can keep us out, but God can help us and let go of that spirit, that spirit of ownership. Because when we come in and when we come in the interest of the kingdom of God, we we've been learning how God wants us to be a steward over what he has given us. So everything is his, everything that he has given us. That means your clothes, your car, your house, your business, your, your ministry that he's given you, um, your, um, what else? Your money, everything belongs to God. So if you have a spirit of ownership, you're going to be just like that rich young ruler. You're going to walk away sad because you don't want to give up anything. You got to get to that point and say, Lord, everything is yours. Everything is yours. And before um, Bible study on tonight, and because um, I try to 
go ahead and do my offering before we enter into service. And everything that I had in my account, I gave it all. I just gave it all. I said, God, I just give it all because you know what? In thee, O oh Lord, I put my trust in you. I don't. I can't put my trust in this money because if I put this trust in this money, it's going to let me down. And if I don't have enough, if I have a need, I saw, I saw, I saw that towards a need. Amen. Amen. I, I was trying to think of how I was. I remember earlier how I was going to. If you have a need, so. So what you have, that's it, it. It was said so much better when I heard it, and I, I've heard it so many times. But if you have a need, so, so in that need. That's not how I wanted to say it, but anyway, maybe Pastor Matthew might know what I'm saying, and he can say it during offering on tonight. So we want to go to principle number ten, which which is section five. Nothing we we give up for the kingdom is ever law ever lost. And, and the second part to that, and on the contrary, it is multiplied and returned to us. If we give up everything, God going to bless us. That's the, the mentality that we need to get. Amen. We need to understand that if we give up everything, guess what? Nothing is lost. Nothing is lost. But because we live in a democracy and they have told us, you need to go get a job. You need to go get some education. And it's all about me, myself, and I. And that's not... How it is in the kingdom of God. Nothing we give up for the kingdom is ever lost. And you have to have that mentality. Nothing we give up for the kingdom is ever lost. It is multiplied and is returned to us when we trust in God. I would not tell you to do something that I'm not doing. I have to, I'm trusting God every step of the way. And I'm telling you, when the Lord released me to tell my story, my husband and I, when he do release me to tell my story, you're going to be amazed at what God is doing. But he said, it ain't time to release yet because I'm telling you, God is doing some phenomenal things in my life. Would I like for things to happen faster? Of course I will, but I got to be patient. Amen. That's one of the fruits of, of the spirit. So I just learned to be patient. Amen. I ain't asking for patient. I'm learning to be patient. So this too is a fundamental principle of the kingdom of God. We got to consider, consider this exchange between um, Peter and, and Jesus in Luke 18, 28 and 30. That's Luke 18, 28 and 30. Peter said to him, we have left all we had to follow you. I tell you the truth. Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. So the scripture is, is letting us know that Peter was, was feeling some kind of way about his own status. And sometimes we do. We're human. Yeah, I get it. But you better make sure you get yourself back, put yourself back in check. So he reminded Jesus that he and the rest of his disciples had left everything in order to follow him. And so Peter really was asking, what's in it for us? What's in it for us? And then you make it personal. You probably saying, well, God, what is it? What What's in it for me? So Jesus answered, is about that no one can who gives up everything for the kingdom of God has really lost anything because they will receive many times as much in this age, not to mention eternal life in the age to come. Nothing that we give up for the sake of the kingdom of God do we lose. Nothing, absolutely nothing. The king will return it to us with more. That's how God's multiplication, just like we may learn two times two is four, but with God's multiplication, two times two may, may be ten in his in, 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 in his way of doing things. Okay? So if your priority is to have a nice house and you live and work day in and day out for that house and the mortgage is the focus of your life, God may not let you have it, but you will miss the fullness of what he wants for you. He says, if you exchange your priority for mine, if you give up your priority of a house and take up my priority of the kingdom, I'll not only give you a house, but I'll give you many houses and you got to believe God. You got to believe God. Amen. Whatever we give to the king for the sake of his kingdom, he will multiply and return to us. The more we give, the more we receive. I'm going to say that again. The more we give, the more we will receive. Because see, we're not making a prayer list of saying, this are my, these are my needs. He already know your needs. But are you seeking the kingdom first and his righteousness so that all the other things can take over, run over you? You understand what I'm saying? Are we doing that? We can't be about our own lust. 
and our greedy desires, but we can seek his kingdom even more and help others to do so as well. So that's why I come on every Thursday. Amen. Jesus says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well and if you don't understand that you might need to take the time and dissect that verse matthew 6 and 33 take the time to look up those words because we took the time a while back seek first seek consider pursue um make priority first his kingdom you got to learn about his kingdom got to break things up and so when he's talking about his kingdom he wants you to even know about the benefits because we talked about those 26 principles he wants you to know that there is a taxation basically he wants you to give your tithes and your offering there is a uh, a health program which is healing um he has an angelic host which which is um the army not for us to be in the army we're not in the army of god we are we be we're not soldiers in the army of God that is in error it's the angelic host we're talking about the angels they're the ones that protect us amen God used them to give us divine protection as well as he he uses his angels amen and so many other things so that leads us to the last one on principle on tonight principle 11 the kingdom priority is exclusive but it is not limited the kingdom priority is exclusive but it is not limited okay let me make sure i have um changed the powerpoint on the end so the people okay so it's there all right so i want to go over this last part and we're about to be ending on tonight um i apologize for going a little bit longer on tonight but we had some technical difficulties but I, this word here is good so chew it well on tonight chew it well on tonight so god wants you to have all things okay he wants you to have all these things he just doesn't want them to have you so forsake everything for the sake of god's kingdom Give him your all and he will give you all these things. Somebody ought to say all these things. Put that in the comment box before we get off tonight. All these things. He, do, he just doesn't want them. He just don't want the things to have you. Give him your all and he will give you all these things. And so we stop here on tonight. And on next week we will begin with chapter 4. The divine priority mandate on next week and i would uh, encourage you to read over the outline and the principles along with chapter four in the book applying the kingdom of god i just want to encourage you um i had put in the um the email that goes out weekly that we will begin um april the 11th at um five o'clock um learning more about the kingdom of god and um guess what we're going to test it out and see how things goes and we're going to only use um dial in a uh, conference call live we're not going to use any other um space and that number everything it will be posted on the thing we're going to see how things go i don't know if we're going to do every thursday but we're going to try it april the 11th so put it on your calendar at 5 a.m and i'm we're going to talk a little bit more about this on sunday as well but 5 a.m if you got to get up and go to work, guess what? Put it on so you can listen because we got to go back. It's going to have us to go all the way back to the beginning so that we can make sure that we're getting what we need and understand it clearly. Amen. And then we're still going to come on at 7 p.m. Uh, doing our regular lesson as well. So I'll give more information about that on, on Sunday. All right. We thank God for the opportunity to be able to share the word on tonight. And it's time we're going to turn it back into the hands of Pastor Matthew. Let's receive him at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. That was some good teaching on tonight. Um, I'm going to do a couple of announcements real quick because I don't know is whether Lady Alicia is up here. I'm not sure. I don't see her. So I'm just going to tell you, um, first we want to say happy, ba happy birthday to all our April babies. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Um, and then just want to let you know that we have the uh, Kingdom Gathering every first third and fifth sunday this sunday we will be having um the gathering at 10 o'clock so invite a friend invite your family members and come and be a part of this kingdom 
uh, building ministry gathering on this Sunday. And as Apostle C already said on beginning on um, Thursday, April 11th at 5 a.m., um, it'll be about the kingdom kingdom of god you know should be teaching more about the kingdom so set your alarm clocks be a part of it because if you are eager to learn more you can get it there and i just want you know to let to, to everyone to know that each and every time that i hear about the kingdom i get excited i get excited i, I you know i want to learn more it gives me a great feeling because you know just learning just learning about the kingdom it's exciting for me I don't know about you, but for me, it is exciting. And I, I'm so excited about that. So, um, and then, you know, next Thursday, although we have the, the session at five o'clock in the morning, on that Thursday, on the 11th, in the evening, we're still gathered again for our regular Bible study. Amen? Amen. So make sure you come on for this Sunday because we will be having service on this Sunday. Um, so amen and just want to let you guys know that it is given time now you can't be God given no matter how hard you try because you know what he is the greatest giver of all and you know here at Kingdom Building we always say if you don't have nothing um, you have to give yourself but if you once you're in the kingdom God will supply all your needs amen and when Pastor Apostle C was talking earlier when you sow your seed give of your resources you can expect that god will see your giving and will multiply back to you what you have given just as he's promised in his word scripture verse is luke 6 in verse 38 you can talk to god about your specific need as you give trust in him and releasing your faith for the need to be met so that's what she was talking about when she so said she gave towards your need that's what it is <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you see towards your need. Yes, that's it. So it is giving time now. And um like last week, like Pastor, Apostle C, you know, you say so you gotta if you messed up before you gotta start somewhere. So give something. Give something. Make a sacrifice to give something because you know what? Last Sundays there were so many people that went out and bought those new outfits to go wherever they had to go. And guess what? Some people bought Easter outfits and didn't even go to the house of the house of worship. <laughs> they just bought new clothes to hang out with their people and go around and go to different venues and functions. But you know what? We got to give. We got to give. You got to give God first. You got to give him his due. And because he owns everything, amen. Thank he you. he owns every single thing. So you might as well just go ahead and give it up to him because guess what? If you don't give it to him one way, you're going to pay for it in another way. Mm. It'll be a bill come up or something happen with the car. A God forbid somebody get in some trouble. You have to give them some money. One way or the other. It all belongs to God anyway. Amen. So let's be obedient and give. Amen. 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 So you know the ways that we give. So as you get your devices in your hand, I'm going to do the kingdom giving prayer. As citizens of the kingdom of God. We understand that there will be no lack for preaching the gospel, nor in our personal affairs. We are not covenants of the Lord's blessing, but we are covenant partners with the plan, purpose, and will of God. God is our source. God is our supplier. Therefore, we will always have more than enough money. Money is not our master. Jesus is our master. Lord, teach us teach to us, man, master and manage our money according to your will. Yes, God. As I do so, I'll never be broke again. I'm out of debt. I'm living financially free and I have all my needs met. And I'm going to help send the gospel throughout the world. My father wants yes, he does. me wealthy. Yes, he does. I agree with my father. From this day forward, I set my heart to be financially stable in all my ways. I'll listen to the word of God. I'll give and I know I'll receive. I'll plant and I'll yes, expect yes, harvest. Yes, yes, yes. I'll sow and I know I'll yes, reap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prosperity is mine. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen, 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 and amen. amen. Listen, y'all, come back on Sunday. It's first Sunday this Sunday, so make sure you have your elements together because we're going to do communion. Amen. Amen. But come on back. Tell a, tell, tell some family. Tell, tell a friend. You know, we don't hold you all day. We come in and we give it to you and we be on our way so you can do whatever you have to do. Listen, I'm Pastor Matt. I love each and every one of you. You can't do a thing about it, but love me back. Go with God. Stay with God. Remember, it's kingdom first. Listen, you can't say yes to God and say, oh, but. You can't do that. It's one way 
or no way. Mm. God is the way. Back over to you, Apostle C. Be blessed, y'all. Thank you, Pastor Matthew. I heard you tonight saying your um your your line. Amen. So the quote to leave you guys on tonight with tonight it says, "Whatever you prioritize, you will pursue." Let me read it one more time, and we're gonna close with prayer and do our benediction. Whatever you prioritize, you will pursue. Amen. So, Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established even in our praises, O oh God, that we will look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you for learning more of the, about the kingdom, applying it, O oh God. Help us to take heed of what's being said. And we feel like if we didn't get it completely, help us to go back and listen to the reflip, replay on tonight. So I thank you for the platforms that we're able to use when we come on YouTube and Facebook and uh, StreamYard. It allows us to do that. And we thank you for Conference Call Live and to everybody that's on tonight. So Father, I pray that you will continue to bless us all indeed, enlarge our territory. Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread. And for whatever need you may have in your life, look to the hills from which cometh your help. All of your help come from the Lord who made heaven and he made earth. So we want heaven to invade the earth. We want heaven to invade the earth. So we say, Lord, have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. With uplifted hands in the presence of the Lord. We say, the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face toward us and give us peace, peace, peace. Amen. We receive the peace of the Lord. We thank you, each and every one of you that came on tonight. God bless you. And for those that will listen to the replay, God bless you and heaven continue to smile upon you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we love you. God bless.